Bioluminescence, or the ability of an organism to generate light through enzymatic processes, exists across the spectrum of life forms, having evolved many separate times. The vast majority of glowing life forms are in the seas, with some estimates as high as 75% of marine life being able to produce light, but on land it can be found in microbes, insects, and fungi. The purpose of the glowing varies by organism. The phenomenon of a bioluminescent bay is produced by glowing dinoflagellates trying to scare away predators who disturb them. Fireflies glow to attract mates and sometimes to lure unsuspecting males of other species to their death. Half of all jellyfish species glow, and the reason varies from defense to attracting prey, attracting mates, and possibly for communication. But why do some fungi do it? And what does it have to do with insects? Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. What benefit a mushroom gets by glowing is largely unknown. Hypotheses on the subject include spore dispersal, defense, or metabolic coincidence. To make things more confusing, different parts of the fungus may glow depending on the species. Sometimes it's the stalks, sometimes the caps, sometimes the mycelium, and sometimes the basidiums. In the fungi, the ability to generate light seems to have only evolved once, and these fungi are found in the order Agaricales. So this here is a phylogenetic tree of the species within the Agaricales, and you can see if you zoom in here, this is the root of the phylogenetic tree, and this green blob indicates where the ability to generate light evolved. So it's fairly close to the root, this little red spot here indicates where the ability was lost. So the gene mutated and everything past this red point can no longer generate light. So if you zoom out, you can see that the ability to generate light is limited to sort of the basal portions of Agaricales. And we can zoom in further here and you can see the lineages here listed these are the five named evolutionary lineages, lineages which can uh, generate light, but within the broader groups that they belong to, sometimes the uh, light generating mutation, the gene for luciferase, fungal luciferase, has mutated out. So there's just these sort of pockets remaining of where these genes are clearly active. And these sorts of fungi are found globally, primarily in dense forests, with the highest densities occurring in Japan and South America. And this here is this here is an infographic showing where the current body of knowledge sits as far as the distribution of these agaricales that can glow. And you can see here kind of Japan is very very famous for glowing fungi, but the latest research has shown that actually the Americas where it's really going on uh, the most. As far as Africa being this low, this is largely because there's been very, very limited research into uh, the fungal species of Africa. Unfortunately, the true scope of the distribution is unknown because the research into the glow these glowing fungi has really only been taken seriously and really picked up in the last 15 years. Even recently, some mushrooms have been shown to glow uh, too weakly for human eyes to see, but they do register on a photometer. So if we go back to some of these, it's possible that some of these quote unquote non-glowing fungi actually do glow. It's just that our eyes can't detect it. For the most part, the ones that we do know about are ones which researchers have stumbled upon uh, kind of almost accidentally as far as seeing strange glowing fungi in the forest at night when they're there for some other reason. There are three hypotheses worth talking about as to why fungi might bioluminesce. One, metabolic coincidence. Two, to attract insects for spore dispersal. And three, to attract insects for defense. The metabolic coincidence hypothesis states that bioluminescence is merely a byproduct of metabolism, specifically the digestion of lignin which is commonly found in woody plants, and that the bioluminescence process is just a byproduct of a detoxification process, particularly against the peroxides generated through lignin digestion. 
all the bioluminescent fungi seem to use the same enzymatic mechanisms in order to produce light, the primary enzyme, fungal luciferase. They are both luminescent and non-luminescent strains of the same species, and so the glowing itself may have no ecological value, and would likely only involve some sort of secondary metabolite. Fungal bioluminescence provides an antioxidant effect in this hypothesis. However, fungal bioluminescence is known to have a circadian rhythm about it. Light is emitted continuously throughout the day and night, but the maximum output of that light occurs at night, around 9 p.m. A fixed cyclical rhythm like this may show that it has nothing to do with digestion. The spore dispersal hypothesis proposes that the glowing light serves to attract insects to carry the mushroom's spores. Experiments have been conducted showing that insects are attracted to the glowing fungi, even if the fungi are sealed within glass tubes, preventing the insects from smelling them. Recent research in Costa Rica trapped invertebrates coming to bioluminescent mushrooms, unlit fake mushrooms, and fake mushrooms with lights installed in them. Mushrooms primarily attracted flies, which may benefit fungal spore dispersal. Circadian rhythms could be a control to optimize bioluminescence, thereby benefiting fungi growing under the forest canopy where there's minimal wind. This does not explain why other parts of the fungi glow, though. Also, mushrooms produce millions of spores a night, so the benefit of having an insect disperser is questionable. The final hypothesis, that the glowing aids in the defense of the fungus, is similar to the dispersal hypothesis. It proposes that the glow either deters animals who would eat them, akin to aposematism, or attracts the predators or parasites of animals that would eat the mushroom. Evidence of this hypothesis is limited, but it would explain why non-spore-producing tissue generates light. So which hypothesis do you think is correct, or maybe a combination of hypotheses?